About six years ago, I spent a weekend in Eka Chakra for the first time. I was completely ecstatic. I must have danced through the entire village, taking darsha out of all the holy places. And I remember on the way back home, I wondered, why was I so ecstatic in Eka Chakra, but not in Mayapur where I lived? Mayapur is also a holy place with something to see practically at every step. What was the difference? And where was my enthusiasm? I realized that in Eka Chakra, I was a pilgrim. But in Mayapur, I was a resident. And when you live somewhere, a sense of normalcy and routine sets in, and you lose appreciation for where you are. But I didn't want to be that way. And finally, after all this time, I decided that I wanted to make sure to spend my time here going to holy places. And I'm hoping by taking you, the viewer, with me, I can stay accountable and hey, maybe we learn something too. What's up, posse? It's Prima. Welcome back to my channel. This is a new segment where we check out some temples and I tell you a little bit about them. Now, I am not the tour guide that you want at all, ever, for any reason. But here we are anyway, so let's begin. The very first place we went to was the Yoga Pit, which is the center of Mayapur and Navadvip Dam. Yoga meaning union and pit meaning place. Now, there are two meanings to this. It could mean that this is the place where the Lord descends to the earth, and it's also the meeting place of the Lord with his associates. So essentially, this is the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is an incarnation of Radha and Krishna. He was born in 1486 to Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra. Now here's where the pastime gets interesting. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu leaves the material world in 1534. The Ganga moves and covers up this place for a hundred years. And when she moves again, it disappears. And people inhabit this area. And it's assumed that the yoga pit is actually on the other side of the Ganga. So then Bhakti Vinod Thakur gets a vision and he does some research and realizes that the yoga pit is actually here. And in 1887, he invites Jagannath Das Babaji to come here. Now, Babaji is old. He's maybe estimated 144 years old. He's hunched over and he has to be carried everywhere in a basket because he can't walk. So as soon as his servants set him down here, he immediately leaps in the air. He starts dancing and exclaiming that this is the actual birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that confirms it for Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and he begins constructing a temple in 1893, and he completes it in 1906. Here is how we get to the temple. Okay, so this here is the main road, and Iskon is down that way, so you'll only come down this road. You'll take a right and keep going down straight, and you'll see that the temple itself has a very unique looking structure on top. So let's walk, it's just a short distance from our place. I'd say you'd pay 10 or 20 rupees uh, with a rickshaw. If you're gonna walk, it'll take you like 20 minutes. It's a busy road, be careful. Yeah. I love India because you're always within five seconds of ending your life.
take darshan of the deities, I just wanted to take a moment of your time to tell you about my children's book. That's right, I wrote a children's book about Krishna's most famous pastime as the butter thief, based on the Krishna book by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. It is beautifully illustrated. It's a very fun read with your kids, so please click on the link in the description box below to buy your copy today. Thank you. So when you walk into the temple premises, the temple is on the left, and on the right is a small temple dedicated to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. When you enter the temple, you are greeted by three sets of deities. At the center of this altar are the deities of Gornarayan, with Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya on either side, who were installed by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. In 1934, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur expanded this temple and added the other deities and expanded the temple hall. During the excavation, they uncovered something amazing. They uncovered an ancient black stone deity of Adoksa Javishnu. After calling an archaeologist to examine the deity, it's estimated that this deity was worshipped during the time of Lord Chaitanya. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur concluded this deity was actually in fact worshipped by Jagannath Mishra. So if you look very carefully on the center altar, you can see it there with Lakshmi Devi and Bhu Devi on either side. Pretty cool! Also on the altar, the deities on the left are of Radha Madhava and Goranga Mahaprabhu, and on the right we have the Panch Tattva with Lord Jagannath. But what's around the corner is what's so special. So Satchimata and Jagannath Mishra had a son named Vishwarup. After that, Sachimata gave birth to eight daughters, and each one of them died right after they were born. And I can't imagine the pain they felt, having these very wanted and loved children, and they just die. And they're besides themselves with grief and pain and confusion, holding these lifeless little babies time and time again, and they just look like these little sleeping angels, and then having to cremate them and give their remains to Mother Ganga. And what to speak of only doing it once, I, I just like, I can't imagine doing it eight times. And then Sachimata gets pregnant again and delivers this precious little golden boy, uh, Goranga. And the astrologers name him Vishrambar because they say he will deliver the whole universe. But the ladies in the village call him Nimai because he was born under this neem tree. And also because neem leaves are bitter. And if they name him Nimai, the god of death Yamaraj will not take him as he had taken the others, thinking that he is too bitter to take. So here, in this place, we have the deities of Sachimata and Jagath Mishra and little baby Nimai in what is a replica of the maternity house in which she had him. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu grew up here. He lived here with his wife. He did everything here until he took sannyas and he left. Behind this is a temple of Lord Shiva with two Shiva Lingams. The small one is Gopishwar Shiva and the large one is Chaitrapala Shiva. When you come to Mayapur Dam, you must come here first because Chaitrapala Shiva protects the Dam and only he can grant you entrance. Gopishwar Shiva is the one who admits devotees to the Lord's service. Now the last set of deities are my personal favorite. Toward the back there is another altar of Gorgadadar and Lakshmi Narsingadev. It's just really peaceful back here. Okay, can I be real? Every time I look at Narsingadev, I keep thinking he's Varahadev, like something about the shape of his face. Doesn't he look like a Varahadev? He just, his face is really unique. I think I was reading somewhere that a lot of these deities were first made of like, you know, mud and straw, which is like traditional here in West Bengal. So that must have been the face shape at that time and they they kept it, they liked it. Finally, next to this temple is Gorakund, where Lord Chaitanya would have taken his baths. 
This temple is so close to my house that if I'm not home or, or at the ISKCON campus, I'm probably here. It's absolutely beautiful and peaceful here. While we were wandering around, we heard a very loud sound coming from the temple hall. What's going on? and it was this amazing group of pilgrims that came to Mayapur Dam from Arissa. And they were singing these Oriya bhajans for Goranga Mahaprabhu. And it was so powerful to be there in that atmosphere. I just wanted to share just a moment of that kirtan with you here. Something about the way those Murdunga and cards all sit, it feels like a defibrillator on my heart. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. If you have a question or comment, leave it here in the comment section below and I'll respond to it in my next video. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more. And please check out the description box below for my social media handles and the link to my book. I hope you're having a great day, had a great day, gonna have a great day. Bye. Come on, bite. Come on, bite. Big bite. Mmm. Tasty.